G'day folks, how are you going? You know, you read a lot about people who have issues with their three-way caravan fridges not performing properly. So in this video, we're going to have a look at how I go about solving one of them. Uh, so while I run the uh, intros, go down the bottom down there, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell next to it. That will let you know when I upload another video and I'll see you in a minute. Hey, welcome back. So I said there are two main reasons why a caravan fridge generally doesn't work properly, providing it's in good working order, of course. Um, one relates to the, uh, the air that runs up the back of the, uh, the fridge to help it cool, so getting that circulation going. I'm um, not gonna deal with that one. Uh, today we're gonna look at the uh, 12 volt electrical side of things. Um, now generally speaking, I don't have a problem with my fridge anyway. Mine seemed to work quite well. Um, even when I went to Darwin a couple of years ago, uh, we're up there in the uh, quite heat, quite a lot of heat. And uh, generally speaking, my fridge worked all right. It did warm up during the course of the day, uh, but it never got to the point where it actually started defrosting uh, anything that was in the freezer. So, I mean, I consider that to be you know, reasonably okay. So generally speaking, your fridge is powered through the plug that goes to your car. This is a 12 pin plug and uh, the power from your car goes through this and goes to the fridge. Um, now what I did um, I don't know, six months or so ago, I actually connected another positive wire from my fridge back to my battery I have here in the caravan. And uh, my theory was that that power would boost the amount of power that goes to the uh, caravan because apparently the 12 volt side of things from what I've read um, it really needs to have a good 12 volt power supply for the 12 volt side of the fridge to work correctly if it's not getting enough amps not enough uh, power through it it will um, not work correctly so I thought well I'll hook this battery up to supplement the power coming through here because the other problem I noticed as well on the car where this plugs into the power plug, the socket that the power for the fridge runs out of is actually a little bit black around the plug, which usually suggests it's dragging a crap load of power through that socket, and so it's getting a little bit warm. Uh, that's why I want to supplement the power with the, the uh, caravan battery. But of course, the caravan battery can't uh, last forever, so uh, I actually had the caravan battery hooked up through an Anderson plug, which goes back to the car, to keep that charged as well. Um, and I guess it's sort of, it's working. But I'm gonna go one step further with that uh, today. I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm going to put another DC-DC charger in the caravan. So when the ca power comes from the car through the Anderson plug, it's gonna go through the DC-DC charger, then to the battery, and then from the battery, it will go out to the fridge. And then hopefully, um, keep the fridge working properly. As I said, never really had a big drama with it. I'm just kind of doing this um, as a preventative maintenance. And to be honest, I don't actually know if it's going to work. So if you're an expert in these sort of things, because, well, I'm not, um, and you've got some opinions on it, write them down the bottom there. Let me know what you think. Let everyone else know what, uh, whether I'm doing the right thing here, whether it's going to work, whether it's not going to work, or if there's any other uh, issues that uh, is around it. So uh, that's my plan. So my plan to make all this work will go something a little bit like this. First I've got my car. The power will come out of the car through the Anderson plug and go into 
a circuit breaker first. Then after that, it'll go into a projector DC-DC charger. The reason why I particularly had that one was because uh, I've got the same one in the back of the ute and it works and I know how to wire it up and it's not that much to them to wire them up anyway. But uh, I was happy with that, it's a cheap price. So uh, I got another one to go in the caravan. From the DC-DC charger, I'm going to uh, mount a block of wood somewhere in the battery compartment, I think. And then onto that, I'm going to mount a couple of uh, terminal blocks. Now the reason why I'm uh, mounting them to a piece of wood is uh, just to give a little bit extra insulation between the um, connector block and the metal wall that I'm going to be attaching it to because I just want a little bit of space there so if a wire, positive wire comes off or there's a bit of an accident hopefully it doesn't short out. Out of the terminal block wires will head off to the battery and also off to different devices in the caravan and then from there power will then go through to the fridge. So there you go, that's the plan for my setup. Now while I was putting this together, Four Wheel Drive Supercenter had a, um, a sale on their uh, uh, battery monitor. So at the same time, I'm going to be installing one of them. That'll go in there somewhere, I'll work out where that goes. So that's my plan. So, I've just spent the last couple of hours wiring the DC-DC charger and the King's um, battery monitor together because they're going to go in there somewhere and then down the bottom here is the, bottom, is the top of my uh, battery compartment uh, so the wires are going to go down through the uh, box into there. Um, message for King's if you're going to put terminals on the end of your wires to make it easy, how about making your wires long enough to actually do something with? The wires are like about four inches long. Who the hell is going to mount their battery monitor next to the battery? You're going to put it somewhere where it's convenient to see. So if you're not going to make them long enough, don't bother putting terminals on the end of them makes it easier to uh, to extend them then. So now I've got to work out where this is going to go into there and uh, how to get my wires down and, and sort of work out what's going on from there. So I'll put a GoPro on my head and you can see what's going on. So inside here is where I'm going to mount it. Um, up here will be the um, DC DC charger and the King's battery monitor. This is the top of the battery box. So I've got to drill a couple of holes down through here for wires to go either way through and then uh, connect up to the battery terminal down the bottom there. So in here's my battery box. So on the back wall there I will mount the um, positive and negative terminals on the wooden block and then up the top there is where the wires should come through and then connect up to the battery and to the terminal block. That's my plan anyway. I'm going to drill some holes now and um, to get the wires through but I can only get grommets that size they're not very big um, so I've got to drill a couple of them and I'm going to use one of these here these uh, cone shape um, drill bits because I think it'd be easier than trying to drill with um, other types of uh, the standard type of drill bit be able to get down to the size that I need I think a little bit easier So that's the grommet in. Um, so now I know I've just got to drill down to uh, the second last one of these and that's the right size for it. 
Only thing is I've got to get the grommet out again now because I've got to get the wires through the grommet and into the um, hole before I put the grommet back in again. Makes it easier that way. So at the moment, this is what the top of my battery looks like. So I've got to go through that and work out what wires go to what and what wires need to go up to the DC charger. So that's the first wire up and now I'm just going to join the, the uh, alternator in on the uh, DC DC charger to the power wire that's coming from the uh, ute. Okay, bit of mucking around, but I've now got the uh, wires coming from the van up and wired up. And I've got the, uh, the um, battery monitor, the wires for that, are now going back down towards the battery to the terminal block, which I'm now going to install. Okay, so that's what we've done. Got the power, the uh, wooden block up there with the two uh, terminals on it and the cables will now attach to that. So it's the next morning. Um, I worked through to a late last night. It was starting to get a bit dark to see what I was doing. Um, but uh, so I thought I'd give it away and carry on today. Only trouble is being Saturday today. Uh, all the neighbors are out doing all their stuff that they want to do around their house. The bloke across the road is building a new um, second story on top of his house. There's a lot of banging and clanging going on over there at the moment, but oh, well, that's what you get for living in the burbs. Um, so last night, well, yes, yeah, last night, I, um, I've got the wires through from the battery coming up and I connected up the um, DC-DC charger and all that sort of thing. But in, in the process of doing that, the previous owner um, had put a um, D uh, Anderson plug on the outside um, and connected that to the battery, which was where he plugged his uh, solar panel in. Um, and when I was wiring up last night, it's actually quite a thin wire. Um, and because I want to run the DC-DC charger, which will take a, a fair bit of power, um, I thought, oh, well, I should probably change that over at some point, you know. But Overnight I thought about it, I thought, oh look, if I don't do it now, I probably will never do it. So uh, this morning I've got to um, rerun that wiring and uh, put in a heavier cable so that um, the, the DC-DC char charger will run properly. It's, it's only probably about, I don't know, 500 mil long or something. It's not a big cable, but um, I'll do it now anyway and then it's done. Um, but I'll show you what I've got up to so far. So this is the inside of the battery box. Um, so you can see up the top up there where my wires are running through and then I've got my wooden block over the back there, my terminal block. Uh, that red wire that's attached to it is uh, coming out of the battery monitor um, and then all the uh, other accessories will attach to that bolt there next to it and that'll be where um, all the power comes off from. Um, this little wire here that one there is um, the one I've got to change. Here's the Anderson plug down here. Uh, what I'd done was I just um, ran the cable from the uh, down the drawbar and just plugged into that Anderson plug for the convenience. So that's why I uh, uh, how I got my power inside for the battery. Just it was an easy way of doing it. But I'll swap that cable out and uh, make something a little bit better.
All right, as you can see, so I've now replaced that um, that wire. I've put some, I think about 30 amp uh, wire in there, so that should be more than enough. And um, I've uh, just bogged it up with some slastic and that in there to stop the moisture and dust, hopefully, from getting up into the, uh, into the uh, battery box. So now I can get back to doing what I was actually doing before. Not exactly sure what I was doing before now, where I'm at. So there you go. That's the two units mounted. Just need to tidy up the cables a little bit, put a couple of earth uh, straps on it and uh, then wire up the wires in the battery box and then she's ready to go. Hopefully. Right, so I've gone through and I have checked all my wiring, make sure that everything was hooked up the right way around. I've uh, wired up the um, positive and negative bus bars I've got inside and uh, I've put the battery back into place and I'm just about to hook up the uh, power. I've got a fuse in there ready to go. So let's hook it up and see if it goes bang. You can actually hear something clicking inside there. Hopefully that's a good click. Oh, we've got power. There we go, how's that? I think that's a success. Had the car running, well I've still got it plugged in. The DC DC charger has got a blue light showing what type of battery it is and an alternator light on which means it's connected. Um, the King's thing says that there is 13.1 volts in the battery but it's not showing anything in the way of a charge. So, I'm not sure. I'm going to uh, go and turn the fridge on and see if it does anything. Or maybe I've got to turn the actual King's thingamajig actually on. Hang on. Not sure. I'm going to go turn the caravan fridge on the 12 volt and see what happens. Now I do have the, uh, the standard 12 pin plug, plugged into my car as well so it should get the um, feed from there as well to run the fridge so we'll see what happens. It's working! I've turned the uh, fridge on and it's now got negative 10 amps coming from the battery. It works. It's all good. Alrighty, changed my hats again, put this one back on again. I had to change hats because this kept falling off all the time and I needed this to keep the hair out of my face. I don't know how you women put up with it, hair in your face all the time when you're trying to do things. Anyway, so that looks like that works. I've got uh, a charge coming from the car uh, going into the battery which is supplementing the power that the fridge is using. So I think that's going to work. Um, time will tell. Um, I'm going away in the uh, middle of February so... Uh, 
we'll see if it works uh, okay for that then and uh, I'll let you know. The, uh, the King's uh, battery monitor, probably do a review of that in a few months time uh, once I've worked out how it works and see what it does and that sort of thing but at the moment I think it's going to be all right. Really there's no reason why most people can't wire this sort of stuff up yourself because um, the diagrams that come in the um, with them the, uh, with the uh, products they're fairly self-explanatory they, 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 they're not that hard to follow there's only uh, with the DC DC charger there's only uh, one two four wires really that you've got to worry about the uh, the battery monitor from Kings same thing that's only got uh, one two three four wires coming out of that it's not that hard to follow most people could probably do this yourself and you would save yourself probably a couple of hundred bucks in having somebody else doing it for you so um, if you were thinking about installing a DC DC charger into your back of your car or into your caravan or something like that um, seriously look at yourself doing it to save yourself some money um, and then oh, worst case if you sort of bugger it up then you can always get somebody to do it afterwards um, anyway so uh, that's pretty much it for this video so uh, if you like what you saw then uh, hit the thumbs up down the bottom there it really helps the channel out um, also uh, consider subscribing and hit the bell next to it and that will send you an email let you know when I upload another video uh, it's all free doesn't cost you anything so um, pretty much yep, that's it so until next time happy travels